Hey all laws and welcome back. Today we are going to talk about Kentaro Miura pretty much just stating that a lot of us were wrong and Berserk is going to change. It sounds like the journey, the party's journey is over and everybody's going to split up, go their own separate ways and we are just going to see completely different ending Berserk than what some of us thought. It also sounds like we are indeed coming close to an end of the final chapter. If you consider four-fifths of the way close to the end on something as large and voluminous as Berserk, which has like, what, 65 manga volumes in and of itself, so you've got like 20% left, that's maybe another 20 volumes, maybe 18-ish if you divide it just correctly. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Actually, that'd be like 15 volumes. Anyways, that's not that's not something to blink at, that's a lot. All right, so Katar Miura, great guy, super chatty, kind of giggly, kind of a kind of an interesting dude. He likes, like, I never really heard him talk. I've only seen like one picture of him leaning over and drawing on something. So, uh, this is towards the end of the interview when he starts talking about drawing. He gets past that. He talks a little bit about how basically why the boat arc may have taken so long, but that's not what we want to focus on. And before I get started, I do want to thank Frosty Fusions for posting this on Twitter and then going through what. I think he actually did translation. Now, uh, it could be wrong. It could have just been translated on the DVD because this was released on the Gold Memorial Arc Special Edition disc. So it's, who knows? Anyways, let's take a look. Yeah, it's when you're saying like four fifths of the way. This is before, so right here, he kind of talks about how Guts and Griffith haven't met yet on face-to-face. -face. Uh, that's obviously has changed now. Uh, and he says, like, when it does happen, there will be some big points. <laughs> like, Koska getting snatched up and taken away. Okay, and then, then he also talks further about how he has to wrap things up that he established. There's a lot of open questions that just not have not been answered. Uh, one of the big ones being Skull Knight, like what's his background? Uh, what's the deal with God Hand? Uh, what's the deal with the Baylit that Guts is carrying around with him? Um, is Elf Island gone forever? Okay, lots of small little points. And let me skip ahead one more time. Are we listening to talk? And here he goes. Now he's talking about the sort of arc where everyone formed a party. Speed up a little bit. Okay, and this is simply what he's talking about with party and when on adventure is coming to an end. And he's talking about how it's going to transform and change completely. We've had a lot of theories on this channel and our previous channel that we closed, uh, or, well, transformed to Digitally Twisted Outlaw News. Uh, but we talked a lot about theories on there, like what we thought was going to happen next. Now, my biggest one I was pushing was that Guts was going to become King of Midland or some kind of de facto King of Midland uh, in order to rally enough humans to go take on Griffith's army because Griffith does have an enormous amount of humans there. Uh, that could be wrong. Uh, it could be that Guts goes on a journey with Skull Knight and they go deep, deep to the astral plane and they discover a bigger power for them to actually take on Griffith. Uh, you could see Farnese and Serpico kind of take off on their own along with Shirke and try to get Casca back from Griffith or try to undo some of the damage that Griffith has done. You could see Puck and Isidoro go out and try to get back the mermaid girl and Puck get back all his little elf friends and everything else. Or like some of my theories, the Puck will use the bailin and kill everybody off. Um, and then it's, it's quite a bit. That could change me on out. Casca could, you know, take on Griffith or go to Griffith's side completely or try to find a way to separate Moonchild from Griffith. There's lots of theories videos that are out now that are theory videos that can be made based on all that. So the party is over. They've, they've broken up. It's kind of like the end. Uh, Jenny made a great uh, anal anal analogy to like... Lord of the Rings, when the Fellowship of the Ring finally broke up at the end, and each of them went on their own separate way. And that's kind of seems like what Katar Muir is getting at. He's saying that the story is going to take on a completely different form. So it may no longer be the adventure. It could be now more like what I theorized, like King Guts, where it's more like a military uh, 
story are like you gotta rally up the kingdom and get them all organized and everybody becomes who they're supposed to be and fight back against this major threat before it destroys like the, ex the entire both astral and physical plane as everybody knows it uh, because Guts can't take on Griffith by himself and then all these individual characters obviously can't take on Griffith but combined if they become more powerful or they continue to grow and expand they could but honestly I think it's going to be really just Guts who will go under the most drastic change throughout all of this. And Katar Mira talks a bit about, about expanding further upon Skull Knight's actual identity and his background. Not too much, because Guts will still remain the main protagonist, main focus, but probably just enough so we can understand what kind of change he went through when he delved deep into Astral Plane, and Guts is going to go through the same as well. He's saying that the track is going to change. And then talks a little about Skull Knight. So I think this is the most interesting part of the interview that Katara Mura touched on. And I wanted to discuss on it the most. I do believe there's going to be an enormous amount of change. Um, it's, like you said, it's broken up. The party's over and done with. And it kind of makes sense. And that, this also would make sense, too, if this was his decision of why the Elf Island was so overkill and so overly dramatic. And Gutch just having a hardcore decline. I still think it was a little overdone. I don't agree with it. But... Hearing him say this, like this was him breaking the party up, or we doesn't say it, but it's we we can go in and assume uh, that makes a little bit more sense. That way, it's like a very clear, defined like this is the end of the party. Fun times over. Now they all got to go their separate ways once more. Uh, and what happens the next? We don't know. Now, what's interesting enough is like when you say like four fifths or left, and you've got like sixty four volumes. You've got like eighteen, nineteen, maybe seventeen volumes. That we could still be seeing Berserk take another what up to maybe 10 years or eight years or something to finish. So, Berserk is not coming to a conclusion anytime soon. And obviously, Studio Gaga and Koji Moore are going to do a fantastic job or try their best at least, or hopefully, are allowed to do their best uh, to finish it and really complete the arc as it was intended. So I hope you guys like this. Uh, we are going to cover a little bit more pieces of the interview, but I thought this was the biggest one and most important, so I wanted to cover it first. All right, Outlaws, we'll see you next time.